Hello everyone, this is Steven from the Even Steven channel and today we're taking a look at the Smith & Wesson model 627. This is SKU number 178014. This is the 4 inch Pro Series. 4 inch barrel Pro Series. Uh, model 627-5. I think that's like iteration or generation. 627-5 fifth generation if I understand correctly. So we're going to open the box up real quick, show you what comes, comes it with it. Uh, the revolver is not inside. I just didn't want to fit it all in there. Oh, knock that box over. But uh, inside we got some literature. Join the NRA. That's okay. Uh, registry information. Some California mandated thing. Uh, it, the revolver came wrapped in this. It's kind of, I guess, paper or wax coated paper. Lock. Uh, manual, which I did read. Um, it's not specific to this model of gun, but I did read it. There was some good information here. This came inside the cylinder to kind of protect it. This is a key. You can actually lock the gun up, which I, I don't care for. And these are the moon clips. It comes with three moon clips. Uh, these are TK branded custom moon clips. And that's just what's in the box. I'm not planning on using this box all that much. Because I'm going to carry this around. I'm going to actually put it in something like this, this kind of soft case. I'm going to have to carry it in this, you know, in my in my bag and stuff. So I'm going to be using this. I'm not really going to use that case anymore. So let's get this out. We've got the Smith & Wesson Model 627. Let's see what we got going on over here. Take out these moon clips. Got some loaded up over here. We'll get to those. But they look cool on the table, right? some ammo. Alright, let's start looking at the Smith & Wesson Model 627. We're going to look at the markings real quick. Sometimes I skip over things. So we have Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. Let's see. Trademark. Have the Smith & Wesson logo. So the model number is actually not on the gun. Very easily to see. You have to actually open the gun up. Look inside. There's a serial number. There's the model number. Uh, I have no idea how these model numbers work. I have somewhat of an idea, and I'm going to say it's a little confusing, and I, I don't care to explain it today. The little I do know. This is the Pro Series. The Pro Series is intermediary between the standard production guns and the Performance Center. It's kind of like a little stepping stone. It's not quite Performance Center, qual performance center quality, but it's just a little bit nicer. And just Smith & Wesson. Oh, what we got here? Made in USA... I'm not sure what that is. Smith & Wesson, Springfield, Massachusetts. So what we have here is a double or single action 357 Magnum revolver. And i got to be honest, it's a pretty nice one. We're going to go bottom to top as I typically do. We'll start with the grip. This is a Smith & Wesson branded grip, but this is absolutely the Hogue mono grip. When I saw this, I was like, this looks like a hoe grip, and it absolutely is. It's a hoe grip, very similar to the one on the, my Ruger GP100 that I owned before. I feel like this screw might be backing out a little bit. I'm going to check that later. Uh, but this grip is excellent. Excellent. Fits my hand well. Helps soak up recoil. I just love it. I see no reason to change this or alter it at all. Perfection. Perfection. Good stippling here. Uh, it would be nice if maybe you could have gotten some rubber over here, but um, shooting the gun, fantastic, fantastic. Let's see, let's go up. We have the cylinder release. You know, on the Smith & Wessons, you push forward. On the Rugers, you push inward. On the Colts, you pull backwards. Um, I don't know if anyone's, any of them are really better or worse. I think the Smith & Wesson and the Ruger method are a little bit faster. The Colt might be a little slower. But the Smith & Wesson and the Ruger implementation of that idea is pretty much equal. Got the hammer. Let's do a little safety check here before we forget. So we have single action. Pretty light and crisp. We have double action. While it might look a little stagey doing it slow like this, practically speaking, this is very smooth and um, very easy to use. Was that a little rebounding hammer there? Looks like we have a transfer bar safety, and there's a transfer bar right there.
forget how that works exactly. If that's blocking it or helping to actually actuate it. Uh, I won't profess to be an expert on the internal mechanics of a revolver, but I am a revolver guy. I love revolvers. I shoot them well. We have the uh, target sights here. Pretty good. We got a white back. Uh, kind of a white U shape, almost like a Glock rear, rear sight. And we have a uh, front sight with a little orange piece there. I found that actually shooting this at the range and trying to adjust it, um, it was very difficult to torque this counterclockwise. For whatever reason, I, I made the mistake. I, I was shooting a little bit to the right, and I, and I accidentally pushed, started pushing the sights right, where I should be pushing them left. And it was I found it easy to turn them to the counter. Uh, sorry, turn them clockwise, have the sight go to the right. But when I started doing counterclockwise, I wasn't able to torque it enough. I actually had to get a ask someone else for a, a screwdriver with enough torquing power to be able to turn this counterclockwise. A little stiff there. But like yeah, like I said, clockwise move the sight to the right. Counterclockwise move the sight to the left. This is the elevation adjustment. Let's see. I think clockwise brings it down. Counterclockwise brings the sight up. But uh, yeah, really nice sight picture. I like it. Let's see. We have the cylinder. Now keep in mind, this is a 357 Magnum revolver. It is an 8-shot 357 Magnum revolver. Uh, which is basically the most capacity you can get in a revolver of this type without doing some weird custom stuff. I don't know of a production 9 or 10-shot 357 Magnum revolver. This is pretty much the biggest you can get. Ejector rod. Works pretty well. Let's see. Look like some of the machining marks on the inside. There are a little bit of imperfections here. I'm trying to show it as well as I can on camera. But overall, uh, the machining on the gun is actually pretty nice. Trigger guard trigger. This appears to be a cast part. However, the gun works so nicely, I don't mind. It's a little expensive, though. You think for the price, you get a little, you know, a little nicer tr looking trigger. It's going to have this weird oxidized look to it the trigger and the hammer uh, I don't care for it but you see you kind of see like little little scratches in there so while it's not the most appealing looking thing it, it does work fine we have a four inch barrel and I think this part right here I think this is just um, an attempt at weight reduction and it kind of looks like Squall's sword from Final Fantasy 8 if you remember Final Fantasy VIII, it kind of looks like Squall Sword from Final Fantasy VIII. His gun revolver. Uh, so yeah, there's a little bit of a reduction cuts here, weight reduction cuts here, here, here. Attempts at weight reduction. I think this gun is still like 43 ounces, so it's cool. a bit hefty. Now let's take a minute and talk about these moon clips. Because I think it's something that people don't discuss too often when they talk about this gun or guns like it. So... This one that the that came with the gun is marked TK, which I'm assuming is TK Custom, which is a well-known uh, manufacturer of parts like this. And I went to the range and I went to shoot this, and it was so hard to load. You know, I knew it would be a little bit of force, but I can't get it in. I can't get this in. Now there are loading tools. Oh, there it is. There are loading tools and there are unloading tools. Um. But I just feel like this should go in a little bit easier. But, you know, certain clips, there's more than one company that makes clips for these. TK Custom makes it, Speed, I'm sorry, Speed Bees makes it. And there are tools you can use to load and unload. Uh, one of the tricks you can do is unload is to kind of put some kind of thing here and rotate and can't. Oh. It's hard. It's hard. And I think people kind of overlook how hard it is to load, load, load these clips. But there are tools to unload them and load them. Um, and I looked in the manual, and Smith & Wesson just says, yeah, push them in. Just push them in. I actually checked the manual. I wanted to read it because I was having such a hard time at the, my first time at the range. Smith & Wesson just said, yeah, just push them until it pops. Just push it until it pops. Let me get some 
38 Special. So this is what I was shooting today. I was shooting New Republic 38 Special and 357 Magnum. And let me just see how hard it is to get these in. It's, it's not going in. It's not. So for the sake of just having something to use for practice, I actually took a pair of pliers. I literally took a pair of pliers. If you look at the loading tools, it's just like pushing them in like this. So you have to be very careful not to bend the clips. These are truly clips. They are easily replaced. They're not disposable, but they're, some, they're known to be something that is a, a limited use. I mean, if you get if you get away with using it for years and years and years, that's great. But don't be surprised if these get bent and then you kind of just throw them away. These are about five dollars each, by the way. And I took literally a pair of pliers and I used the pliers to just so it have something to use to practice with. And I have been practicing with these clips. Uh, let's see, what's a Jerry Mitchell style? Push in like this. Jerry says take it and you're supposed to hit the Smith & Wesson logo and you should go right into place. Oh, I didn't do it. I failed you, Jerry. Also, it should be pointing down somewhat. But that's how it's supposed to work. You're shooting. Bam, bam, bam. And as I'm, you're doing this with your left hand, you're supposed to be reaching for your right hand for the one on your belt. And you go like this. I'm not doing it right. <laughs> we'll practice. Practice makes perfect. But if you are practice, I'm, I'm doing it on an awkward angle too. It doesn't help. But if you practice and you kind of hit it right, it goes in like that. And you can do it so fast. It's so cool. It is so cool. So, so far, if it hasn't come across, I am liking the Smith & Wesson 627 so far. Eight shots of 357 Magnum. What's not to like? So, the gun looks nice. And if you actually figure out how to get these, get these clips working, they, they do what they're supposed to do. How did the gun actually shoot? Well, I'm here to say, the gun shoots fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So this is a little drill that I did. And by the way, I'm doing this double action only. So when I'm shooting this gun in this particular example, uh, I'm not using single action, which would be really nice for good accuracy, nice little crisp trigger pull, very little pressure. Oh, very, very nice. The single action is very nice. On this particular drill, three shots at 5, 7, 10, 15, 20, 25 yards. So what is that? Three times six, 18 shots. And that is what I did out to 25 yards. I, I kind of do this as a point of reference. When I'm shooting closer, I tend to put it on the dot. And when I'm shooting farther away, I tend to put below the dot just the way that the sights are regulated. And you know, man, if you can just kind of just ignore that, just ignore that one over there. But look how otherwise tight that is out to 25 yards. The gun in double action is so smooth. You might not look it on camera when I'm doing it awkwardly over here. But it can be so smooth. And the gun is so accurate. What other targets do I have? Alright, this one was um, single action. This was single action. Uh, 15 yards, single action. One, two, three, four. I'm pretty sure. If, oh no, that was four shots. That's four shots. Because um, that's all the ammo I had left in 38 Special. One, two, three, four, 15 yards. How about 25 yards? Four shots, 25 yards. Pretty good. Again, maybe I could do a little bit of practice and kind of bring that in. But, you know, this is my first time shooting it, by the way. What about 357 Magnum? So I've talked before about how certain guns in 357 Magnum are really a chore to shoot. And I gotta, say, I gotta say, this gun in 357 Magnum is a pleasure. It's fun. It's a fun gun to shoot in the caliber it's designed for. Imagine that. Just, if you have a smaller revolver and you put 357 Magnum, especially when you have these revolvers that weigh like under 20 ounces, they're not fun. They're hard to shoot. 
Uh, this is just something I was doing. This is, uh, real quick, this was, I guess a cylinder. So was eight shots, um, seven yards, 357 Magnum. So the, very nice, nice tight group. And honestly, I was showing off to someone who was shooting next to me. And they were shooting something really loud, and it was really annoying. And I was like, you know what, let me pop some 357 Magnum in here. Show them how loud I can get. And show them much better I can shoot. Because they, they, their, their groups was not like mine. I don't know what they were shooting. It was annoying. It was loud. So yeah, um, even in 357 Magnum, the weight of the gun, the ergonomics of the gun, the grip, this rubber grip, fantastic. It all comes together. It all works well. I will say that when you shoot like 100 rounds with this gun, I shot 108 rounds. When you're shooting a lot, the gun gets hot. Like when you do this, parts of the gun are getting hot. <laughs> So, um, so far I am enjoying the Smith & Wesson 627. Now, I've kind of ordered a couple of things that haven't come yet. I've ordered the B, Speed Bees holster. They make a Kydex holster. I've ordered their, like, clip holder. I didn't order a, you know, clip holder. You know, it's, it go, you put on the belt and hold, use magnets to hold it in place. So there's a bunch of accessories I'm getting. I guess I'm going to have to get some kind of loading tool or unloading tool I, uh, for these clips. Uh, I really do want to use them, but they seem like they're kind of a pain. Uh, I guess that's just kind of the nature of the beast. I, I just feel like... Me I also ordered the B Speed Bees brand clips. Their clips. So this is TK Clips. I ordered the Speed Bees. Oh, I'm saying it right. I ordered a different brand of clips, and I'm going to try those clips out and see if they're working better. Because maybe that, that different brand will work better. And sometimes you'll have a certain clip, and you'll have a certain brand of ammo, and they won't, they won't work together. I'm under the impression these should be easier to load, and I found it very, very difficult. So at this time, um, I really am liking the Smith & Wesson 627. It's kind of a first look. Now, a question that might come up is, what is a gun like this good for? And I think any place you want a full-size revolver, it would work well. You know, a really nice target gun, a really nice range gun. I don't like it as much for home defense because I really like it when you have your home home defense gun has a has a, a weapon light attached to it. However, you have eight shots of 357 Magnum and you have cl clips at the ready. So if there was a revolver for home defense, it would be something like this. But this is really intended as a US PSA competition gun. That's kind of what it's for. It's what it's meant for. Um, there is a five inch version. That's the performance center version. Um, I'm liking this gun so much. I don't know what how much more the, better the performance center could be. But this is basically an entry-level USPSA revolver gun. And I think if you're looking um, to use it for that, I think you would be well served. And I think that will pretty much just do it for now. I might be a little dirty because I was shooting it today. But this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. So far, liking the Smith & Wesson 627. I'll have a little bit of update, maybe in a month or two, when I have some more rounds to it and have all the accessories that I want. But this is Steven from the Even Steven channel. Please do all like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I will see you next time. Thank you and goodbye.